In the last segment, we started a more nuanced discussion of fixed points. Not just whether a fixed point is stable or unstable, but the different ways that it can be unstable. Those nuances, particularly the shape of the landscape around a saddle point, and the implications of those shapes are going to be absolutely critical later on in this course. So we're going to spend this whole segment digging into those ideas. First, I'm going to show you a saddle point. The inverted point of a pendulum is actually a saddle kind of unstable fixed point, not an upside down bowl kind of an unstable fixed point. Here's one of the places where the different representations that we use in nonlinear dynamics can actually be confusing. In particular, the connection between the physical object and how it moves, and that notion of a dynamical landscape that the trajectory is traveling on. If you think about this physical object, no matter how you perturb it, if I perturbed it that way or this way, it would fall away from that fixed point. So you might think that that defines an upside down bolt in the landscape. But it's not. It's really a saddle in the dynamical landscape that lives suspended over the state space of the system. And you're going to have to trust me on that assertion until we get to the math in Unit 5. So what I'm going to do now is a bit of linear algebra. Some of you may have seen this in your courses. The key concept in this discussion is that of a matrix, a bunch of numbers that travel in a pack. They have rows and columns. This, for example, is a 4 by 3 matrix. It has four rows and three columns. The key idea in this discussion is that a matrix can effect a transformation of space. This is the cornerstone of computer graphics, by the way. By multiplying by the correct matrix, you can rotate an object or scale it or move your viewpoint or move the lighting. The connection between that idea and dynamics goes back to that landscape. And the idea here is to think about the matrix as capturing the slope along which the ball rolls. The specific quantities that we calculate from a matrix in order to get at the fundamental features of the landscape, that is, the ridges of the landscape, the valleys, the basins, are what are called the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The German word eigen means same. A point that starts on an eigenvector stays on that eigenvector. And you can pretty well imagine how that connects to a ball rolling on a landscape. It's kind of like the path of a stream down the bottom of a mountain valley. An eigenvalue tells you how fast the state travels along the eigenvector and in what direction. Specifically, that movement is exponential, with the eigenvalue s in the exponent. What I mean by this is that the distance between the ball that you drop in that stream and the place where you dropped it originally grows as e to the st. Now there's an issue of direction here. A ball in a stream is moving away from the ridge of the mountain, but it's moving towards the lake below. You calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors at a particular point. If you did that calculation at the top of the mountain, you'd get positive eigenvectors for the stream. That is, the ball would roll away from the point where you calculated it along that vector. If you did that calculation instead at the bottom of the lake, then you'd get all negative eigenvalues because the ball would be rolling toward that point along the stream. Here's a quick example of how you actually calculate eigenvalues mathematically. Let's say I wanted to calculate the eigenvalues of this matrix. What I would do is subtract s off the diagonal and then take the determinant of that matrix and set that value equal to 0. And find the s's that make that true. Those are the roots of what's called the characteristic polynomial, and they are the eigenvalues of the system. So you probably remember to take a determinant, you kind of cross multiply. And if I gather terms, I get a quadratic, and that's going to have two roots, and those are going to be the two eigenvalues of the matrix. And you probably remember how to find the roots of a quadratic equation, that old minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared over 4ac. If I did that, I would get these two numbers. In general, when you're solving a quadratic, there's a bunch of different possibilities. Let's leave aside, for now, the possibility that we get complex valued roots. We'll come back to that. If we have real valued roots, there are four possibilities. They could both be positive, they could both be negative, or you could have one of each sign. Each of these eigenvalues is associated with a specific eigenvector. To find the eigenvector that is associated with an eigenvalue, you plug the eigenvalue back into the matrix equation and find the null space. I'll defer that for now. 
Let's say we found the following two eigenvectors for some matrix. And let's say this eigenvector is associated with eigenvalue S1, and that eigenvector is associated with eigenvalue S2. If both S1 and S2 are negative, that means that e to the s shrinks, and so both of the eigenvectors point inwards. What kind of landscape is this? This is a bowl. If the eigenvectors are perpendicular, it's a hemispherical bowl. Here, they're not. What if both of the eigenvalues are positive? This is the upside down bowl situation. What if you have one eigenvalue positive and one eigenvalue negative? That's a saddle. The negative eigenvector is along the spine of the horse, and the positive one is along its girth. Apologies for my artistic skill or lack thereof. Recall that eigenvalues tell you how fast a ball will roll along the corresponding eigenvector. If the horse is very fat, a ball will not roll very quickly down his side along the S1 eigenvector. In that case, S1 would be small and positive. If the horse is sway-backed, so the middle of his saddle droops way down, that would mean that the negative eigenvector, that is S2, is big. The state space portrait that we drew of the pendulum in the previous unit should actually have contained a bunch of these saddle kinds of points at all of the odd multiples of pi, all of the inverted points. I left those out because I wanted to go through this discussion before putting them in. Note that I've only drawn in the eigenvectors right around the fixed points in this picture on the bottom of the slide. That's because farther away, in a nonlinear system, the horse might develop sciatica. That means that the streams, the directions that are maximally uphill and maximally downhill from the fixed point, aren't straight, as they would be if the matrix were a good representation of the landscape. If you zoomed in right here, the previous picture would be correct. And that's generally true of most of the kinds of systems that we'll look like that the eigenvalues and eigenvectors work if you're looking at a small patch of the dynamical landscape. That is small enough that that piece of the landscape can be accurately approximated by an elliptical bowl, either right side up or upside down, or a saddle. But, and this is a major point, remember from the first unit, the world is nonlinear, and dynamical landscapes don't have nice bowl and saddle shapes. They're much more complex. And the application of linear mathematics to a landscape like this amounts to approximating the whole thing as a single bowl or saddle. In the next segment, we'll talk about how to extend the eigenvector eigenvalue ideas into this nonlinear landscape in an effective way.